what are the intercepts of the function f of x is equal to x raised to the fourth minus 16. All right, so first thing is, what do they mean by intercepts? Well, when you look at a graph, when you look at a coordinate axis, I should say, you have two axes. You have an x-axis, and then you have a y-axis. Let's pretend we have this function, some mess of thing, right? Some, some messy thing. I think I said mess of thing, which I don't know what that means. But basically, the x-intercepts are the locations of the function or the coordinates of the function or the point on the function that crosses the x-axis. Therefore, the y-intercept would be the location on the graph or the point on the graph or the location on the function or the value of the function, whatever you want to call it, where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. If you do have a function, you should only have one y-intercept. Otherwise, it won't press the vertical line test, right? And you can check out some videos we have on that if you have a question. Also, um, a graph could have one x-intercept. It could have no x-intercepts. That's fine. It could have three or four or ten. All right? could have a bunch. So, And this graph, by the way, has no relationship to what this is. I just drew whatever came to my mind first. All right? Um, so what do we need to do here? So it turns out that we know something very unique about the points in blue. And we will also know something unique about the point in black, okay? The points in blue here, which represent the x-intercepts, you know the y-value actually of all those points. You will always know the y-value of the x-intercept. I know that sounds a little strange, but that's how it is. You will know, you will not know, let's start there, the x-value, but you will always know the y-value of the x-intercept. All the y-values that lie on the x-axis have a y-value of zero, zero. Conversely, you also know something special about the y-intercept. You will always know one of the values of the y-intercept, one of those values of the coordinate pair, and you're going to know that the x-value there is zero this time. You won't know the y, though, okay? Because it's on the y-axis, and all points on the y-axis have an x-value of zero. Now, armed with this knowledge, we can now find out the missing values. Let's first focus on finding the y-intercept, or aka, aka finding the y-value when the x-value is zero. Now that's important because remember, f of x, by the way, is just, you can just write y there. Make this easy on yourself. Just write y. y is equal to x to the fourth minus 16. Okay? Now what we can do is we can plug in then, uh, to find the y-intercept, we're going to plug in zero everywhere we see x, okay? So y will then be equal to 0 raised to the 4th minus 16 because what we're doing is we're saying when x is equal to 0 here, what in the world is y? That's what this point is basically, that's the question when you look at this point. And when x is 0, what the heck is y? That's the whole point of having a function or having a formula, having a math equation, all right? You can calculate it. So y will then be 0 raised to the 4th is just 0 minus 16. Obviously, then y is just going to be equal to negative 16. And now, this is basically our y-intercept. In other words, the coordinates of the y-intercept will be 0, comma, negative 16. That is the y-intercept, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how easy it is. Okay? Now, let's take that. And let's put it over there on the, on the top right. Okay, let's clean up. Oh, I'm going to leave that function there. Let's clean up some of the space now. Let's find our x-intercepts, okay? So remember, of all your x-intercepts, you will know something special. You will know the y-value. So what you're going to do is you're asking yourself the question, when y is 0, what in the world is x? So plug in 0 for y and solve this for x. How would you do that? Isolate the variable. Add the 16 on over to the left-hand side. you got 16 now is equal to x raised to the fourth, right? I know this might look a little funky, so just switch them around. Just move them. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go, right? That looks a little better. Now, to find this, what you can do is you can basically uh, raise to the fourth power if you'd like. Or, excuse me, raise both sides to the one-fourth power, right? If you wanted... Because remember, the whole goal is to just find x. So I'm thinking, how do I get rid of the one-fourth? Well, I only get rid of the power if I raise this power to the reciprocal of that power. 
okay? Because the rule is when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply them, and four times one-fourth is just one, and that will leave you with just x to the first, or aka just x, all right? So that means that that's x, but remember, whatever you do to one side of your equation, you better do that same thing to the other. So you're gonna raise that side to the one-fourth, okay? Now, 16 raised to the 1 fourth, you can plug that into the calculator if you wanted, right? If you weren't sure, so you just do 16, raise it then, and then, uh, actually you don't even need parentheses with this calculator. So just delete it, just do one divided by four, okay? And there it is, two, two, that's it. Now you might say, oh, that's really cool. I just have one value there, right? I just have one value. Well, not exactly, not exactly, not exactly. I know that shows up as a positive too, but you could also have a negative two, right? Because we'll check this out, ready? Right? Put this in parentheses, negative two, raise it to the fourth power. Wait a minute, that's 16, right? So when you do this, you gotta just be careful. You gotta be careful that you're gonna get both a positive and negative answer out of this, okay? Okay, so basically what we have now is we have the two values, right? We really have two x intercepts. So in other words, we would have when x is gonna be equal to negative two, the y value will be zero, and as well, when x is going to be positive two, the y value should also be zero. So these will be your two x-intercepts, all right? And let's put a little box around it, and we can move it up and to the right. Now, if you wanna check this with the calculator, be my guest, be my guest, be my guest. I, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Yep, as you can tell, I wasn't a thespian. Is that the right word? I hope it is. This theater person? One of those. Whatever. Um, so plug it on in. X raised to the fourth. Bring it back down. Minus then 16. Hit graph. Okay, now we're really zoomed in, so I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to hit the raise. Just zoom it out. Okay. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Graph. So as you can see, don't you see, like, this is like crossing the x-axis at negative two, and this is crossing it at positive two, right? Look at that, isn't that so beautiful? And that's what we said it should, that's what should the, the coordinates should be, negative two, zero, and positive two, zero, right, of the x-intercepts. And look, the y value is gonna be somewhere all the way down at the bottom, I'm not gonna go all the way there. But what I'm gonna do, let me just go to my table set, all right, I'm gonna uh, start it, let's say I'll, I'll increment it by one, I'll go to second graph. So my table is going to be incremented by one. Look, negative two, when x is negative two, y is zero. Awesome. When x is positive two, y is zero. Awesome. Now what happens when x is zero? Look, y is the negative 16. That's what we said over here. Those are all the intercepts. Okay. So this is kind of what the graph looks like. If you had to zoom, maybe I'd zoom out one more time. I'm going to get the, well, that's really tiny now, right? I'd have to fiddle with the zoom to really get a better picture but hopefully you get the idea. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video helps. And if it did, give us a hand. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, if you're ever in need of a one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring, be happy to help you. Take care.